Over the past two decades, war, drought, political conflict, and famine have resulted in a massive increase in refugees in desert regions of the world. Shortages of firewood for cooking the dried beans provided by emergency food relief agencies and for boiling water to make it safe to drink have reached crisis proportions. The use of simple, inexpensive solar cookers during the day, like these cardboard and aluminum foil solar cookers that are stewing hundreds of pots of food and boiling water for tea in a Darfur refugee camp, could allow millions of families to save their scarce fuel for use in fuel-efficient stoves at night and on cloudy days. It makes neither environmental nor economic sense for women and girls to cook over a wood fire on a cloudless day in the desert when zero emissions free sunlight is available for use with a solar cooker. Few people in the West realize that more than two billion people on this planet are still cooking every day over open fires. They are using wood gathered from Earth's rapidly diminishing forests. For these people, wood is no longer a natural resource. It is an expensive commodity which many cannot afford and whose increasing consumption our planet cannot sustain. According to the UN, there are currently over 10 million displaced persons and refugees, many crowded into desert camps where the most abundant but least used source of energy for cooking and boiling water is the sun. In places like Dadaab refugee camp, imported wood is costing the UN $600,000 a month. Because this meets only 30% of household cooking needs for camp residents, women and girls are still forced to make increasingly long and dangerous treks into the desert to chop down the remaining trees and haul them back to camp. Most of the developing world is located between 30 degrees north and south of the equator, where the sun can provide hundreds of millions of people with zero emissions, free energy for cooking more than 300 days per year. There are three basic types of solar cookers, box cookers, parabolic cookers, and panel cookers, which are the subject of this video. Box cookers work like ovens and can reach temperatures above 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius. Well-insulated box cookers can bake, roast, and stew even in the middle of winter. They cook slowly and evenly, may be left unattended for hours, and present no fire danger since they cannot reach combustion temperature. Parabolic solar cookers concentrate sunlight like a magnifying glass on the bottom of a cooking pot or a piece of meat instantly reaching combustion temperatures. Although the focal point under the pot is as hot as an open fire, the curved reflector never gets hot. Current models are fairly large, expensive, and cannot be left unattended, but all can be used from sunup until sundown in hot, humid, dry, or even in very cold climates, like this one heating up a pot of soup on Mount Everest. In the 1990s, Africa's burgeoning refugee crises prompted the development of a small, inexpensive cardboard and foil solar panel cooker known as the Cook-It. It folds into a 12 by 12 inch square for easy storage and can cook a 3 to 5 liter pot of beans, peas, sauce, cornmeal, rice, fish, or meat in 1 to 4 hours using only the light of the sun. The Cook-It must be folded and unfolded each time it is used, but it only takes a minute to set up. It is held together with metal clips. A lightweight cooking pot, painted black on the outside for maximum infrared absorption, is filled two-thirds full with raw ingredients, then placed inside a clear, heat-resistant cooking bag, like the bags some families use to cook turkeys at Thanksgiving. By creating a greenhouse effect to concentrate the heat of the sun and keep it from escaping, the plastic bag allows the food to cook at temperatures at or above 250 Fahrenheit or 121 centigrade. Because it does not reach combustion temperature, and because the reflector never gets hot, the cook-it cannot burn food and it presents no fire danger. If cleaned after every use, the bag may last for several weeks, but eventually it tears, becomes soiled, or develops holes and must be discarded. Keeping the bag clean can be an issue in refugee camps where families only receive a few liters of water per day and washing soiled bags is not an option. The design of the Cook-It has remained essentially unchanged since it was introduced into the Kakama refugee camp by Solar Cookers International in 1995. Today the same Cook-It design is being produced and used 
by tens of thousands of people in four Darfur refugee camps in eastern Chad, but the plastic bag and the materials being used to make the reflector are not able to withstand the harsh desert conditions for more than a few months. Over the past few years, dedicated volunteers all over the world have conducted research on the Cookit at their own expense, but more R&D is urgently needed to update the design of the Cookit reflector, make it more durable, keep the price low, and find a replacement for the plastic bag. Large international donor agencies like the UN High Commission for Refugees, USAID, and the Department of State's Bureau of Population, Refugees, and Migration have been reluctant to fund the distribution of a solar cooker that must be frequently replaced, and they do not like the plastic bag. This despite the tons of wood and brush that must be brought into the camps on trucks or on the backs of women and girls every day. One final note on this situation. All that wood is being cut down in a forest somewhere else in Africa. And all those trees that have been cut down will take 20 to 30 years to grow back. What follows is an overview of the design challenges and some of the R&D that has been carried out so far by individuals working to improve the cookit. Cardboard and foil reflectors are susceptible to moisture, insects, and animals. When food is spilled on the reflector during the cooking process, and we all spill food when we're cooking, it immediately starts to deteriorate. Because of these factors, the current life expectancy of the cookit reflector is between six months and two years. The East Africa Office of Solar Cookers International has made a cookit which can last for up to two years. It is made of heavy cardboard coated with wax and covered with Tetra Pak foil. Although this model is more durable, damage from moisture, animals, and insects remains an issue. A more durable cookit made of waterproof plastic flute board is being distributed by Solar Clutch in northern Sudan. However, this material is too stiff to be folded into a small square. If storage space is not an issue, this reflector is a good option. However, if refugees are crowded together in small tents, a foldable cookit may be preferable. Most cookit reflectors are still made with cardboard and foil, but tests have been conducted on other materials, including this cement reflector with mirrors on a swivel base designed by Celestino Ruivo of Portugal. Sharon Cousins has designed solar cookers which can reach temperatures up to 300 Fahrenheit, 149 centigrade, made from found and inexpensive materials, including an aluminum foil baking pan, an old charcoal grill, and foil-covered poster board. The Borma solar cooker, designed by Steve Harrigan's Solar Clutch and used in northern Sudan, is made from a clay bowl, a straw basket, cardboard, foil, and a heat-resistant plastic bag stretched over the top. Like the Borma in Sudan, the cookets made by Darfur refugee ladies and Chad are effectively anchored against the desert winds with grommets, strings, and rocks. Dar Curtis, co-founder of Solar Household Energy, and Glenn Newman of Energy Lab, Inc., are testing this prototype, which also reaches 250 Fahrenheit, 121 centigrade, using Chinese-made insulating foil. This prototype cookit was built using Reflectix insulation foil, which can be purchased in rolls from Lowe's. This material reflects well and is very durable, but it requires reinforcement. Also, its insulating properties, which add to the cost of the material, are not required for the cookit. Matthew Rollins in the UK has found that the traditional fold-up cookit delivers only 184 watts equivalent of power. Rollins reports that by removing the folds and creases on the back panel, he has been able to increase the cookit's power to over 400 watts. Roger Haynes of Delmar, California, has also found that a curved-backed cookit made with waterproof plastex from Home Depot gets hotter than one with creases. I cut it out using the template for the cookit. I just pasted aluminum foil onto it. It's a nice curved design, and I found that this gets a higher temperature by 10 or 20 degrees than the ordinary cookit. The only issue with a rounded cookit is storage and ensuring that it will have the same shape after being rolled and unrolled many times. Sanu Kaji, director of the Foundation for Sustainable Technologies in Nepal, is testing another design for the cookit using flat reflective panels that snap together. Here's a panel solar cooker using inexpensive off-the-shelf materials 
from a designer in San Diego, California. Hi, I'm Sharon Claussen and I've been making solar cookers since 1979. This is a, a little one I came up with. It was based on these two things. I go into Ikea with my husband and he shows me these placemats. And he says they're reflective. Can you make a solar cooker out of them? And I realized that if you put the corners together that you could make a nice reflector. One day I got it up to 475 degrees. In addition to making a more durable reflector, a long-lasting, easy-to-use replacement for the plastic bag must also be developed if this technology is to be accepted and deployed by major development agencies. One issue when using the plastic bag is the challenge of removing a steaming pot of food from the bag without spilling the food or burning your hand. This issue is compounded for women living in desert refugee camps where water is scarce and not available for cleaning the bags, which are instead shaken vigorously to dry them. The maximum life expectancy of a heat-resistant plastic bag if used every day is only one month. One option that needs more testing is this plastic garden dome, which reaches 250 Fahrenheit, 121 centigrade, just like the plastic bag, but gets cloudy when touched by the hot cooking pot. Pots heated under an acrylic cake lid have also reached 250 to 300 Fahrenheit, 121 to 149 centigrade. However, like the garden dome, their off-gassing properties and UV resistance are unknown. They cannot be collapsed for shipping, and they crack easily. This design using clear vinyl with a cone-shaped top and wire frame is another option that needs further testing. An even simpler option, designed by Vietski Jongblad of the Netherlands, is a simple wire frame over which the plastic bag is stretched, allowing easy placement and removal of the pot and no need to open and close the bag to get to the pot. Patty Roberts of Solar Cookers International has designed a plexiglass box to replace the plastic bag. I wanted a portable folding cube. It comes in big sheets with a blue coating on it. You peel the back off. Put a rack under it to keep my pot off the ground. And then I usually put a thermometer in so I can keep track of the temperature. If I will need to add food or mm -hmm. stir, I just set it down, mm -hmm. open my pot, stir. But you have a permanent cube that you can use. And I've been using one for a year and it's, it's great. It doesn't delaminate. This solar panel cooker, the Hot Pot, was developed by DC-based Solar Household Energy and the Florida Solar Research Center to address the issue of durability. To replace the plastic bag, the Hot Pot uses a tempered glass bowl and lid with a black enamel steel pot that fits inside to create a durable and efficient greenhouse. The Hot Pot reflector, made of polished aluminum, stays cool to the touch like the Cook It reflector while heating food to 250 Fahrenheit or 121 centigrade. The hot pot bowl and reflector can bake delicious cakes and breads in addition to cooking pots of beans, rice, meat, fish, vegetables, and fruits. Fifty hot pots were tested by Darfur women in a refugee camp in eastern Chad in 2011. It's no surprise that the women love them. However, the cost of the glass bowl and the polished aluminum reflector, along with the expense of shipping large quantities of an 11-pound solar cooker that is currently manufactured in Mexico, may be prohibitive for some regions. This slightly larger version of the cardboard cooker, designed by Chong Tan of Singapore, is able to cook two pots of food at once, both at 250 Fahrenheit, 121 centigrade. In this test, one pot has a clear glass lid. A black metal trivet is used to lift each pot slightly off the bottom of the cooket to increase the temperature of the pot by allowing hot air to circulate underneath. Although some argue that traditional foods cannot be made with a solar cooker, any dish that can be stewed, roasted, boiled, or baked can be made in a cardboard and foil cooket. Ugali, or cornmeal, is one of those dishes that some experts doubt can be made in a cooket, since it traditionally is boiled for 15 to 20 minutes over an open fire and stirred vigorously to keep from burning. On a sunny day, cookets left outside and unattended for 60 to 90 minutes before lunch can easily cook a pot of ugali, while women sit in the shade of a tree weaving baskets or tending to other chores. Once the cooking is complete, the solar cooked ugali requires less than a minute of stirring before it is ready to eat, still piping hot. 
The use of a retained heat basket stuffed with blankets or straw further reduces fuel consumption. It allows a meal that is cooked in a solar cooker in the afternoon to be kept piping hot until served as the evening meal. Retained heat cookers can also increase the efficiency of wood-burning stoves when food is brought to a boil over a cooking fire for 10 to 20 minutes. The fire is then extinguished and the hot pot of food placed in a retained heat cooking basket where it can simmer for several hours using no fuel at all. Millions of dollars from governments and corporate donors are funding the building, testing, improvement, and marketing of stoves that burn wood, dung, charcoal, and other biomass to replace less efficient stoves, like these being built into Dab Refugee Camp in Kenya. Very little funding has been made available for research to improve low-cost, zero-emissions devices like the Cook-It that use only the light of the sun for fuel. The need for more durable, waterproof cookets has become urgent due to the increased number of refugees and disaster situations and the continued unwillingness of large relief agencies to consider this device as a viable technology to help eliminate the need for women to collect firewood miles from their camps. Here again are the requirements for a more durable cookit. The reflector must be waterproof and UV resistant, cost less than 25 US dollars and last for at least five years. It must hold one, or even better, two, three to five liter cooking pots. The greenhouse replacement for the plastic bags should last for at least one, but preferably two years or longer. The reflector and greenhouse must allow the cooking pot to reach temperatures between 250 Fahrenheit, 121 centigrade, and 300 Fahrenheit, 149 centigrade. Both the reflector and the greenhouse must be lightweight, unbreakable, and they must fold flat for shipping. They must both be easy to open and close, easy to clean, and easy to store indoors. The cost of the greenhouse should not exceed $10. This challenge is urgent, and it is critical. These women need your help.